Now this is Hollywood Unlocked. Yo, what up, everybody? It's Hollywood Unlocked and Censored. I'm Jason Lee. Yo, it's DJ Damage. Yo, and we have another Bay Area native in the building, Kaylani. Hey. You, you know, the, the interview I thought would have never happened. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Kaylani, Kaylani, listen, with the coronavirus. Here we go. With all these people dying, with everything, with the economy crashing, with just the world that with with the world going to hell, and we got Kaylani. I'm like, Jesus is coming back real soon. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> well, I'm happy to be here, and I'm happy. You know, we're finally able to like connect in some type of like legitimate way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So just to, um, just housekeeping, get this out the way really quick. Um, you know, I think your fans think you hate me. My fans think we <sighs> hate you. This is true. I don't hate you. Uh, and, I don't and hate you, yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, I just wanted to clear up what we've already cleared up publicly so we can move on and get into shit that's right. important. So, um, you know, people that have been following us for a while remember I was on vacation and um, I was sleeping in the Dominican Republic and I had a little Dominican with me too. So I was like in a happy place. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I woke up to a tweet. Uh, that, um, you know, basically you said that we, we were trash and that we were trying to pay <laughs> your little brother off for some dirt. And I was like, you know, I was kind of gagging because, you know, I liked you at the time uh, and I d- didn't ever, I mean, you're a really quiet person. So I didn't really like, there's no tea to be sought out on Kehlani, um, at least not that I knew of at the time. And uh, which made me, which made me probably think I was not doing my job because it was probably <laughs> something I should have been looking for. <laughs> but, but what we were doing was, um, and then we had the whole back and forth thing publicly. And I talked to your manager, who's amazing. But we had, but basically, what what happened was on the side of doing what I do, I'm a consultant for different brands, and so Fashion Nova really wanted to work with you. And so I don't go through agents and managers because I just feel like it's easier to just have an organic relationship. And so. I, I told your brother, look, I'll pay you five grand if you could hook me up with your sister so I can get her some money. And I don't wow. know how that kind of I don't know how that kind of morphed into me paying for tea, but I was like kind of surprised that that had, you know, was the perception. So, basically, okay, so I think one, how it got misconstrued in the first place was my little brother is like not into any of this at all. So he doesn't know, like, he's just he's just he smoke a lot of weed. He real calm. <laughs> like he's a, he, you know, he takes a little second to like. Be, he's not the fastest, you know. Um, love him to death. He know that. Um, so he were just related to me. Like, hey, sis, like this man trying to pay me for something about you, and like, look at his name. And he showed me. I was like, who? He showed me the name. All I can associate with you with right. at the time is this blog. This right. is crazy. I also, I'm previously just so traumatized by the media and just social media that, like, even I was at a point where if too many people text me, like, yo, are you okay? I'm going to every blog and searching if something happened because at this point, like, I just can't assume, like, something might just always be popping off because it, it was fresh out of, like, kind of a time period of things, you know, consistently popping off. Then when it got explained to me, I was already working with Fashion Nova, so it didn't seem believable. Because mm. I don't know if they told you, I had already done a charity thing with them where we gave $50,000 away to different- yeah. yeah, you were the first person to do Fashion Nova Cares, but that but that was a separate side of the business where they wanted to do a collection. Like they wanted to figure out a way to do a collection. See, but in my, in my eyes, it was like, we're already talking to you guys. I've been to your headquarters multiple times. Like you, I have the ladies that say fashion over rep in my phone. Like <laughs> you could text me, girl. So to me, it just didn't seem. And like, I've never experienced nothing like that. These are always like horror stories you hear, but like, you don't think it's real. Like I'm like, who would actually do that? But also I was like, you never fucking know. Like you just, you really don't know. And, um, and I just, I just was hot, and I was like, it just felt like, especially because my brother's so low key. I didn't know how you knew that was my no, brother. Your brother, your brother's not even like in LA. He's not even in the business. <laughs> in college in the forest. Like, how did you find my brother? Let like- me let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I need to get you my book. I'm from Stockton, California, so I have always been a hustler. I found out today you were a booster. I'm like, she used to be a booster. What happened? We from the Bay, or we from Northern California? You know, we hustle to figure shit out. Right. You know, and um, yeah, I always go through like I have non-conventional ways of getting what I want. You have to read my book. I mean, the way I met Queen Latifah and even got here, you're going to think like, yo, he low-key stock Latifah <laughs> into a friendship. 
But um, yeah, it was like crazy because, you know, I often find my time, find myself in the midst of crisis that like I didn't even know it was going to be a crisis. I think because <laughs> optics, people have different optics and see or think whatever they, they do. And I can't uh, fault you for that. I just uh, I'm glad that we were able to clear the air because I'm like, how, how she don't like me? I didn't even do nothing, you know, or at least I didn't think I did. I mean, you, I mean, <laughs> once, once I understood it, like later on, I was like, oh, I did snap like crazily for like no reason. But when you when you hear it from my perspective, it, everything just made sense. It was like, duh, this happened. Duh, this is what he was trying to do. Duh, this makes sense. Like. So, so well, may, maybe I could have chose somebody else than your 19 year old brother who's far removed from the industry. I don't yeah. know. I just oh, thought, like, Jason, how did you find her brother in the first place? I can't place? even tell you, but I'm telling you, <laughs> I, I'm like a damn, I'm a, a troll. Like, I go all through the social media. He didn't and I even have like a K next to his followers on Instagram. Like, he's like, even my little sister, like, who, who like is always popping up on my lives or like always defending me mm -hmm. on Twitter, going to war for me or something. That maybe I would have understood, but I was like, Jamari, like oh, my wait, brother. wait, wait, oh wait, okay. So let me make a note. You have a little sister. I'll hit her next. <laughs> <time>. <laughs> well, I'm, connect I'm connected. She's now, so. crazy. She's she's gonna get on there and be ten times crazy. <laughs> it's gonna be nuts. So I would just clear my sister. But. Okay, okay. Well, I'm glad we we're able to uh, to clear that up. And so let me clear ask the air. You, so let me ask you. Um, now I know that you're pretty private and don't and we were damaged we were, I were kind of prepping for today and kind of talking you don't really do a lot of interviews and is it is your I know SZA I've recently talked to her and she's very much like a uncomfortable with like the media thing are you is that you too or is it that you're just private and don't really like to engage like that or what is it I mean I used to be a lot more comfortable with interviews but I kind of went through something very massive and publicly that um became like a big media spectacle and kind of it, it for a while made my personal life um bigger and louder than my music mm. and that was never my intention like i never i avoided <clears throat> award shows i avoided events i got invited to so many things and then said no that i think they stopped inviting me at some point because i just didn't want for a long time to be known for anything except for my music and then kind of like my first love and my first heartbreak became very 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 public and then from then on people got very interested in my personal life. Mm -hmm. And I just knew kind of just even kind of how sexist the industry is, like every interview I started going to became about somebody I had dated or like somebody out, they, they could speculate that I was dating or um, just all these things that had nothing to do with my music. And then I started feeling so just like, this is never what I wanted for myself, mm -hmm. you know? So I just tried to completely, you know, avoid it. But recently, I've seen you've been doing a lot of interviews and you have been more outspoken. What what was that change? Is it this new album? What happened in your life where you're saying, you know what, forget all that stuff that happened in the past. I'm going to push through. I mean, it's just come to a point where I've accepted that this is just what comes with, <clears throat> with what I do. And we're at a place in music where, like, this is kind of a part of it. And... I'm, I have to look at it as some type of blessing that people care beyond my music and like want to care about me and want to root for me and want to advocate for things like my family and my heart and my friendships and things like that. So I just kind of had to flip my own perspective to look at it in just like a, I guess, just a more calming and appreciative type of way rather than like, oh, my God, everybody's attacking me because they're going to do what they they're going to say what they mm -hmm. want to say regardless. So, so is, it was the public spectacle you're talking about is the relationship you have with Kyrie, right? Yeah, because that's when I remember there was a lot going on and your personal profile, separate and apart from the music, started to really become a daily conversation. Like um, the hugest. Did, did you did you feel well, did people know that you had um, that, that you struggle with depression and stuff before that happened? Like were people aware of like some of maybe your the things you were going through? Yeah, I've always been open. I think I've been really open about about my childhood, um, my upbringing, and how that affected me. I spoke about, you know, how growing up where I grew up and kind of like different traumatic things that come with that affected me. I spoke a lot about anxiety and just like mm. nervousness when it came to dealing with what I was getting myself into career-wise. I've always been very open about that. So to me, it was like, one, you guys know this about me, so you should know why this is so crazy for me. And then two, I was so little. Like I was I was twenty years old when all of that was going on. Like most people that were um 
kind of going in on me were like in their late twenties and like thirties, and I was like, you guys don't realize that you're literally like going in on like. But that, but that's, that's, the, that's the reason why I asked the question because I didn't. What I didn't understand was the insensitivity. You know, what I mean, like. Uh, you and I have similar backgrounds in the sense of, you know, our, you know, having parents that both struggle with life, uh, the effects that had on us, um, different people cope in different ways. Right. And then on top of that, like you grow up in a city, that's a pretty, it's a rough place, you know? And I didn't really understand the insensitivity though. Where, where do you think that came from? Do you think that was just, uh, the social media and trolls and how unhappy people are? Or do you think it's just people like to see other people's misery? I think there's a couple things to it. I think that one, I didn't realize how huge the person that I was dating was. Like I was, I, go, I was gonna say that. I was gonna I say that. Had no, I like when he approached that. me. He approached me through a friend of ours who was also just like a regular girl from Cleveland. So like I didn't know. Like to the point where I'm going to the studio and I'm like, oh, I gotta watch my boyfriend's basketball game. I don't watch sports at all. Mm-hmm. Like I didn't start until I dated him. Then I'm like, oh, I can't like basketball now. That's kind of cool. Like I see what y'all like about it. Whatever. Listen, I just went to All Star Weekend. After I saw them niggas running up and down the court, I love basketball too. So, oh my gosh, it's stop. cute. It's cute. But, so. but the thing is, um, I don't mean to cut you off. I feel like you get a lot of those casual fans that don't know who Kalani is because you're with right. a superstar that's a basketball player. So now people are just throwing darts and have no idea your story. And I know I interviewed you a few times on Revolt. You always had your cult following. But now when you attach yourself to somebody like that, you have so many people that are not invested into the music right. and that just would love to just say whatever because they're bored. Right. And I think I think men just really care about their favorite sports players. Absolutely. In a different way. Like we don't talk about how like male basketball fans are essentially like like they're the equivalent to like the beehive of Beyonce. Like <laughs> They will ride or die for these men. Like, well, you you remember you remember when Sierra started dating Russell, and then they lost a couple games. They said it was her fault. I'm like, how did how did her being in a relationship with her? Oh, I got blamed for I got blamed for injuries to come way after the relationship. It was insane. <laughs> I was like, I don't know what this has to do with me. We're friends. Like, I don't know how this involves me, but it's it's the combination of how big of fans they were, and also just like huge fans it's misogyny. Like, no bullshit. It's like. Like people were so ready to to diminish every accomplishment I had ever, you know, had in my entire career by myself because I just instantly became somebody's girlfriend. Mm. Um, so it was it was a lot of things combined, but I think also just people had fun and I think I exposed my I exposed that it hurt me and so people saw that as an easier thing to throw darts at, so that's why they kept their own. Well, well, happy belated. Now that you're 25, and this wow. is so crazy. It's so long. It's crazy. Like, that's five years ago. Like, like this is well, what's even crazier is you were born the year I graduated high school. I feel old as <laughs> shit. I was 1995. I'm like, fuck. You're um, good. Listen, this is a good light right behind this camera. Okay, so <laughs> do you um do do you look back and and what when you look back, what are the biggest lessons you learned from that whole experience? Um, I think that. Just to be more protective with things that are very serious, um, that I don't have to try to prove my humanity to a world full of people that are art like just there's people that just aren't meant to understand you, and not everybody has to empathize with you. Like some people have other stories that they would connect better with, and they'll sympathize with those people, and they might throw hate at you. And you, I don't have to continuously try to prove I'm a good person mm-hmm. or I've had good intentions or. Yeah. I have a good heart and sometimes that does get the best of me like I do catch myself being like what the fuck is up with y'all I am not this person y'all trying to make me out to be yeah. but like so on that do you so what made you I know when you I mean I've had thoughts of suicide when you had those thoughts what made you share them publicly like what made you feel comfortable to share those publicly because was it a well, cry for help hmm. what no one knows is that I was in and out of being hella high for like days Mm. High, uh, high with like marijuana or mushrooms? No, I, no, I took like like thirteen Xanax. Oh, oh no! Wow. Um, that was I know I've never said this before, so this is very new. Like I've never talked about it ever. Um, yeah, but I was it. I didn't know that I posted that. So in upon me like waking up and going back to sleep and waking up and going back to sleep and waking up and going back to sleep. By the time that I woke back up. And different people were in the hospital room and different people were telling me what was going on. By the time I woke up and Nick Cannon was like, yo, like, 
they said, I can take you home and like, we can get you home. Your whole family came out and like, we worked out a situation where you could take you home, but you have to know that you did like tell the entire world. Mm. And I could not believe it. I did not know that I did that. But that's the thing. I still feel, you know, even if you did do it, isn't that like, I, I just don't understand like where people aren't sensitive to cries yeah. for help, you know? And I think it's when- I mean, in that moment, I genuinely meant it. I was just saying, I can't, I can't think about why I did it now because I didn't know that I did it. But I'm sure in that moment, I could have answered, I could have answered this question. You know, was it, sure. the reason why I asked this question, just so you know, one, I've never interviewed you. And two, um, it's, it's National Mental Health Month. Um, and I just think that our people don't talk about it enough. I know me and Charlemagne have a lot, had a lot of conversations about it. Um, and I just think that there's people who, especially now with this pandemic, that feel a certain way. You know, what I mean, uh, everybody's losing everything. Just this morning, I woke up, my sister's stepmother passed away. Um, and, and so I know people are going through real things. So the reason why I ask is more so so people can become a little bit more empathetic to what people yeah. are going through and a, le a little less judgmental and attacking. Yeah, I mean, I was really young. I was really high. And I mean, thank God I'm out of that phase where I would ever, I don't do any sort of drug. I don't even smoke weed anymore. Mm. Um, so like, I just, I was a whole nother person. I can't say what exactly got it to that point, but I think everything was so loud. I do, I have a hard time even remembering like that date in general, but I do remember just how loud everything was and me not being able to like navigate through like what was going on. My phone was vibrating so much that like it was moving across the desk like this because of how right. crazy everything was going. Um, then people also didn't understand I was simultaneously experiencing in, in internally like the biggest heartbreak of my life because it had to do with my love life. So it was not just mm -hmm. like heartbroken by the world, but I was heartbroken by the person that I considered to be like my first real situation. So it was like, it was too many factors. And um, just to piggyback off what Jason said, just knowing your point of view, I feel like you got blamed a lot for that situation. Yeah. And um, recently, uh, Party Next Door put out a song and we kind of got a, a, a perspective of what actually you dealt with in a yeah. relationship. How did you feel when you heard that song? Because it was a weird like... What song was this? Uh, Savage Anthem? Yeah. It was... Yeah. I just want to know your perspective on hearing that song because I feel like that was the first time we got to see what Kalani deals with in a relationship. Yeah. I mean, he was really young too and he was just getting into the industry and like he had just got his money and like everybody loved the albums and like that's when all the girls came and like I heard the song a long time ago I heard the song when he made it and he felt the things he felt you know what I'm saying the mm. song and then his label loved it so much they was like yo you should put it out so they encouraged him to put it out I gave permission for them to put it out um okay. they asked me if if it was like gonna be too much for me and I said you know it's probably gonna bring up some funny like I, I took it as more of a song of accountability. Like everything mm. that he said in the song really happened. Like I really came in the crib and smelled sex and was like, oh, like. You smell, you but, smell but, sex. But how do you, what? Like, and you said. I was so little. Like I didn't, first of all, I didn't used to be like the outspoken, like confrontation. I don't, I wouldn't even say I'm confrontational now, but like just be able to address things. I, I was very sprung and like with a guy that I was totally head over heels for is my first love. Of course, I was a bird. Like, <laughs> Not a bird. It happens. You like, wasn't I, a bird. You wasn't a bird. I wasn't a bird, but I just did. I knew things were wrong. I knew everything. I was having girls DM me like, and by the way, girl, like I used your makeup wipes that you left at his house in da 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 da. I just wanted to let you know. What? Like, Okay, so wait, so so I was excited when you came out as sexually fluid because I think the whole world should be fluid. I, I in fact I got a bottle of water right here. I wish to just pour it on the floor. That'd be sexuality. But we live in a world that I, I think it only really exists in um, well openly in the big cities where people can kind of you know blend into a melting pot. Yeah, yeah. Wait, so what what is your type of guy then? Because you have party next door who's very different than Kyrie. <laughs> and then here comes YG. I mean, like, what I mean, is... My have... father. Okay. Like, what, what's your type of guy? Or do you have a I type? Don't, I don't think I have a type. I think that... I don't have a type. With, I think I have more of a type with girls. I think I've peeped that a lot of the girls have been more similar than the guys. But, um, yeah, I don't, think, I don't think you can compare any two people mm. I've ever talked to or dated in my entire life. But I think I'm such a multi 
multifaceted or multi-layered type of person mm-hmm. like each person also you go, you also realize we're kind of basing them on like their outside persona correct so, True. Like, some of them did have a lot of similarities internally or like i felt like all of them had really really big hearts all of them like were very passionate and expressive like um but yeah, I don't think as far as like the basic characteristics of Habitat, because you, you you can't compare them. And I know that people, they make that about me all the time. Like, <laughs> Well, last year, last year I was at Fashion Week. I probably went to everything. And but I, you know, I try to be low. I try to be stealth because it's once people see me, they feel like they can't party because they think I'm there to, you know, pay their little brother to say Mom, something. I was at the gay club once and they was like, Jason, we need an next session. I was like, let me sit down. <laughs> right. Damn, Damn. Oh, Jason, right. you the... Nobody Don't be the party drunk. killer. But unlock, get too drunk. So. Listen, I was I was drunk that night. I'm going to tell you what happened. But somebody <laughs> came upstairs and said, "Kay, I was at the the gay club on a Sunday night. You know, uh, skip church yeah, for a week, cool. and they got like Kaylani's downstairs. I'm like, you know, and I'm, I'm drunk now, so I'm like, I'm going to go down there and ask her why she thinks I was trying to pay her little brother on some dirt. She was like, I'm having a good time. You have a good night. It's nice to see you. But no, it was all love. Um. No, but at Fashion Week, I saw you everywhere with YG. And I actually really thought, like, okay, I like them together. I like them together. You both are have, like, an edgy vibe to you. But, oh, West Side, huh? But I, could, <laughs> but I could also see where there's a balance. Um, why YG? Um, he actually been trying me for five years. And that's where the joke of, like, five years in the making came from, that people took on this whole ride of, like, Damn, that means they was fucking around when she was with him and she was with him. Oh, Lord. I was like, no, this is a joke that we have between each other because he was actually one of the first people to, like, get at me. And I was such a little asshole when I was 19. I was like, yeah, I'm not talking to none of y'all. Like, I'm not fucking with none of y'all. Like, I'm here to make music. Like, and Mm -hmm. I super blew him off. And then he came back later. Like, I'm still trying to take you on a date. I was trying to take you on five years ago. so. So why didn't it work? Um, I just, I think that we, I think, okay, we really, really love each other. It was very passionate and ridiculous and epic. I think we look like teenagers every time you saw us, like if you caught us out, cause we just never let go of each other. Um, you guys but- were, you guys were all over each other. Not even just when you out. I remember vividly right now in my mind. Very good looking couple. One, one, one Oak, New York city fashion <laughs> week. Yeah, but, um, we had matching outfits on and everything. It was cute. I yeah, had that was fire. Them. It was. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm not here to bash him. I I, I dropped a song about it, so there's a, the song is very clear as to what happened. I I addressed it very very openly and clearly in the song, and we just had agreements that weren't followed and um, by that time we had already kind of had a couple of issues just based on like not seeing eye to eye on things and not kind of just being very different in certain areas where I think that people who end up having long lasting relationships are different in. Mm. And it, he, was, he was also accused of cheating too, right? Or you, um, all, but you all had an open relationship and that's what I, I'm, I'm confused about because me and my ex have been trying to do this open relationship <laughs> thing. But then I feel like, can you cheat in an open relationship? You can. Yeah. You can't, you actually have to be more communicative in an open relationship. It's all about like, if we set this boundary, it's like, if me and you are dating, right, Jason? Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, because <laughs> <Hold on, laughs> I, 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 I told Rihanna she's the only one, but now let me open up my mind to the idea. Okay, so we're dating. <laughs> so if me and you are dating and our agreement is, I don't really, I'm not really bothered by you if you're always gone and I'm always gone and you want to have, you know, casual relations, as long as everyone's safe and you let me know, that's my boundary that I'm setting for that. You want to know. I just want to know. I just want to know I want to be in that. I don't want to feel like I'm left out or like something sneaky is going on or like for the sake of everyone's health, I want everybody to be consensual and adults and healthy and always checking in and, you know, things like that. I've, you know, I've, I've, this is not my first time I've been successful in having these type of relationships before. Mm. Um, and just the the boundaries and the rules that I set weren't met. And it was something where I said, you know, I did give all this space and opportunities to be honest multiple times. And it just 
I found out that it was kind of dishonest for a while and I had to step away. Do you feel like, because my rules in a relationship are simple. Don't lie, don't cheat, don't steal. I mean, we can, we can kind of, no, I had a nigga lie, cheat, and steal in the same weekend. So (laughs) that nigga didn't care about the rules. He's the chapter five, I think, in my book. But if you, but do you, do you feel like, because I feel like you can have a relationship that's open and make it work because everybody gets to define what love is to them. Um, And I don't really hear a lot of women who can, who say that, like, and I, I, I love that you say that, um, why do you think people are closed off to having a more creative relationship and everything has to be, you know, fit in a box or be traditional? I mean, I just think it's people's preference. Like some people really would prefer to be and build with one person. And I think that after having a child and like after experiencing that relationship, it just kind of made me feel like younger me and like, okay, now I'm looking forward to like, you know, the next situation I enter to be something where I actively decide to build with them. Because even when it was open, like I was so focused on him that I wasn't necessarily mm-hmm. participating in the open side. It wasn't like he told me not to or told me that I couldn't because that's just not life. But I wasn't in that space. Um, so I'm looking forward to, you know, building and getting kind of in the very monogamous. I want to get married. I like want to have that experience and like have like a, I guess I guess a typical family, but I also think I'm just open to meeting people where they're at and mm-hmm. being honest, people being honest about where they're at. And not everybody is monogamous. People are polyamorous. People are poly. What's the other one? Polyurethane. Poly all the shit. No. So like, Isn't that like a, it's, a, the- it's a, it's fun. I think it's a fabric. I think. <laughs> no, but I know people are just, I mean, I'm, I was riding in a car with somebody in New York and he's talking about he's pansexual. I was like, okay, I can't, it's just too many, it's just too much. But let me ask you this. Would you date a man who was bisexual? My, yeah, I dated a man. I had a baby with a man who's bisexual. He's, he's yeah. great. But you guys were like in love and in a relationship and all that? Because I mean, it just. Was, it was more so like a deep friendship and then we would make a beautiful family and like, it came from that and there was kind of if there was a moment of of like deep romance but i think now we've looked back and we talked about it and it was way more of like a friendship and like an immense amount of trust and a baby and she's perfect and no she's very cute no the no damage the reason why i asked the question i know about that situation but i I talk to tiffany haddish every day about us having a baby i'm not we might not we're not gonna make it like that, you know, but no, I get what you're there, saying. There ain't gonna be no, there ain't gonna be no romance. We gonna have, visit, I, you know, we have visitation. I mean, uh-huh. if we all had babies with our friends, we'd probably have like way more positive outcomes of like positive co-parenting than like because people bring their relationship drama to their parenting. Facts. It's like, are you mad at me because of my? co-parenting right now or are you mad at me because when i used to be your girlfriend because let's talk about it yeah mm. I, hate, I hate the fact that whenever i say I, I call melissa one day i go oh me and tiffany you know we we're kind of you know talking about you know having a baby you know joking or whatever oh 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 i don't believe you like why do people scoff at the fact that friends are talking about creating families out of love like it, that's the crazy part you know and i mean i think it's just like society it's like what we've learned as to how we define structure, how we define what family looks like. It's just, we are now in a space where like, people are so outspoken, there's so much access to like new language and like new dynamics and people are like sharing their stories every day on social media, visibly we can see it all. Like we're just learning more. And I think that it's just a society thing, like society's progressing. So we're naturally progressing because we're learning more about it, so. So what type of girl, cause I see you with like an Amber Rose, you know, um, but like, really? are you an, are you, yeah, I, her and Amber would be, that would be. A, that would be would be fire. Be. I wouldn't even know what to do with all that booty. Like she might be too thick for me. Like <laughs> I could handle it. Like, and I'm saying that as like a bow down type of situation. Like, or, or are you more of a Karuchi um, Or Janae? I, I don't, I don't really know. I think energetically, I mean, I think Karuchi's, I, and I, and I'm saying this because I know, more, I know Janae and Karuchi more than I specifically know Amber. But there's things about them all that I really admire, like Amber's ability to like own all her shit and like mm-hmm. be super, like, like she can laugh at herself, she can laugh at the haters, she can like flip anything into like a positive and a win for her. Her ambition, I love that. I love owning her sexuality. I love that. She's a great mom. Love that. Karuchi, like, 
funny, like loves food, like super supportive, regular, cool girl. Like I love like the, I'm not here to be with all the extras. Like I'm just like doing my shit and like minding my business and like enjoying life. Love that. Um, who's the last one? Janae. Love the like spirituality, love like the sensuality and like the depth. So I, I think feel like she'd be burning too much sage. You wouldn't even no, be able to don't. see her. You wouldn't even be able to her. see you, you wouldn't even be able to see Janae be so much smoke in the room and candles. And you know, and shit. Like, we have good vibes. Okay. Yep. We would be blessed. All right. That's my sis. Okay, so let's let's uh let me ask questions. So um I was on the phone yesterday with Keish Cole. I said, I'm interviewing Kaylani today. And she said, Oh, okay. She didn't say no shade. But, you know, I had talked to her last week and we did the whole live thing where I'm like, uh, I didn't even know the backstory. When I tell you people really feel like I'd be lurking around bushes trying to find the tea, I really, they give me way too much credit. I'm going to bed. Uh, a fan sends us this video of Kamaya, who had just been on our show. And mm -hmm. Kamaya's talking uh, and the fan says something about your name. And then she's like, basically like, fuck her. She's not from Oakland. And then they post, my team posted. And then in the morning... Uh, we wake up and then I had already had Keisha scheduled to go live. So I just asked her, like, is she talking about you, Keisha? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Come to find out, Kamaya was supposed to be, from what she said on the All of Me song, with you and Keisha for the Bay. Yeah. And then you took her off online. I think there's some more, or somehow, let me, let me not assume. She was taken off the song or she wasn't on the song. Um, and then there was some accusation online that, there was colorism that played a part of it or the YG had a part of it. And so I've talked to two out of the three people and bam, here you are. <laughs> um, well, I mean, I will start by saying like, that is someone I called my sister, like the diaper bag I used for my daughter. She bought me like we have matching tattoos. Like, so I think I'm gonna address the colorism thing first. Cause that just blew my mind because it's like, where did that come from when we call each other sister? We have matching tattoos. You're around my family every day. I'm around your family. We've spent day and night and day and night in the studio making this project. And all of a sudden, in the end of it, I'm colorist. Wouldn't that have had to like, I don't know, wouldn't I have affected how if making this project with you or like, that was the thing I think that hurt me the most because it was like, instead of just being accountable about your role in the situation that has to be like a very detrimental lie that could really damage not only like my career, but the trust that my fans have in me as of being a person that doesn't have it, like doesn't fuck with any type of bigotry. I have, my daughter is very brown. Like there's just, it just doesn't, you know, it you don't feel like it didn't add up. It didn't add up. And it also just wasn't, it's not something I think that, I think she knows that people take things and run with me on the internet. Mm -hmm. And there's an opportunity where, like, I kept saying I wasn't going to speak up anymore. And so here, let me just throw something out that I could be taken and ran with. And that's the, that's the part that really just, like, I, I didn't appreciate. Where do you feel like that uh, that strain started between you and Kamaya? Um, while we were making it, well, we were working on the project. And, you know, naturally, like, we had kept having creative differences, whether it was, like, how many tracks should be on the project. She wanted a really long one. I felt like we were in between two solo projects we should just give them something short and sweet whether it was like the features i was gonna have to end up doing all the swaps for the features so there were certain features where i was like well i don't necessarily want like have to do another song in the future so like let's try to narrow down the features it was i'm paying for all these shoots so like let's hurry up and like pick the photos but no i want to reshoot i want to redo this i know we already took all these outfits and shot all these photos but like let's scrap that and do this and matter of fact just make it just draw a big K on a piece of paper. And I'm like, there has to be some type of consideration for like mm. how much time and effort, like everybody on my side of things is like putting into this, you know, especially when I've now pushed my album back and it just kept getting met with like, not businessly. I don't know if that's a good word, but just not business oriented conversation. It just kept getting like really turned up and like, Really, I just kept having to go like, whoa, like I'm gonna just remove myself and just quietly like step away. And I think that the quietness kind of confused everyone because they were kind of used to like being met with like, okay, we're not gonna, you know. So, so let me, so for the people that are like, well, what are you guys talking about? So you got, you and Kamaya had, a, and this a is my project. understanding, a joint project. It's so fire. It's so fire. And so you, and so how much of it did, did it get, did get, got done? All of it or most of it? We were finished. We were done. We did okay. Saturday mixes it came down to the last conversation about the album artwork 
And so is that where the fallout happened, the album artwork? Yeah, it went from I hate this, scrap the whole thing, let's do a new thing, to matter of fact, here's what I here's how I feel about the entire process. And in the conversation where I just kept getting kind of like berated and berated, like I'm sitting on the phone, I was like, you know what, like this has become kind of exhausting. And at this point, it's like taken away from our friendship. But I wasn't saying anything. I just said, okay, I'm just going to have David reach out. That's my manager. I was like, I'll call y'all later. Like I'll hit y'all up in the group chat. And I just hung up. And then I just kind of like told David, like, we're just going to remove ourselves and quietly back away. Because at this time, I've spent so much time and like, energy and like money and my my labels asking where my album is at and i'm like wow i'm about to scrap something that we just spent so much time on that i was mm. super proud of we shot videos like it so was- do, so do you feel like she's the reason why it didn't happen i mean and, the, and the, it was the silently walk away the removing her from the song and just silently moving on with keisha no, I think that maybe, I mean, I, I don't want to say that I did nothing wrong because I don't know how she feels. There hasn't been another conversation about how anything made her feel because I keep reaching out to have conversations, but it just keeps getting met with like, you know, just not a conducive mm-hmm. conversation for me to understand what I possibly could have done. I would love to understand where I could have messed up or hurt somebody's feelings because when you when you hear it, and if you were to like have witnessed the entire thing, I mean, we, we had the entire thing filmed. I had the entire thing documented. And there were so many times where I pulled things up and I was like, I'm not tripping, I'm getting spazzed on, right? Like I kept getting spazzed on and spazzed on and spazzed on to the point where by the end of it, hmm. I did feel like, what what was this? Like what happened? But people don't trip for no reason. People don't spaz for no reason. Whether it did have to do with her internally or me, I would like to really understand it because I, I don't understand it. So- um, so then how did you and Keisha fall out from that part? Like, I, I understand uh, you and Keisha weren't close, but Kamaya, you... Me, Keisha, and Kamaya had the song together. Um, I wrote this. Me and Elijah Blake, actually, is my vocal producer. We, oh, I, I love Elijah. Elijah. Great. And we we all did all the, the whole, like, majority of the mixtape in Vegas at YG Studio. And we did the song, she was asleep when we made this song and she came in and she did her verse. We put Keisha on it. So when it came to the end of it, I was like, well, like if you take your verse off, I wrote the whole song, but I would still like to do business with me and me and Elijah. I would still like to do good business. And because we made this in the time span of these sessions, I would still like to, you know, get like offer her publishing, offer her like a sturdy, like good business situation. I wrote out about business and it was like threats and if we can't drop none of it then if you gonna drop this like this is what it's gonna be it's up like you none of it if we the whole project can't be dropped you can't drop this song and i was like well that's not really fair also when i didn't plan on dropping the song in the first place i posted a snippet on my instagram of the song before the song before the project wasn't coming out like this was to hype before the, before the fallout future. right this was to hype the future announcement of the project um the fans went crazy, then it died down. It was quiet. I was like, hopefully, like they just forget about that shit, like <laughs> it's not coming out. And then one day somebody brings it back up on Twitter. Whatever happened to this, it goes viral again. I quote it and say, Oh, y'all, y'all still want this? Then that one goes even more viral than the first time. And now I've got this like they started a hashtag called Kaylani dropped the song. Like it wasn't like I had this big plot, like I'm gonna go spitefully put this record out. It was like I was getting begged every day on every social media radio station was calling in like we seen the hashtag kill on the drop the song like i was like i might have to really drop this song mm. we tried to have keisha mediate keisha and kamaya weren't cool because of that for a second i think they've since patched it up um and i put the song out and it just the song might be cursed because it didn't the thing about all this is like it wasn't a hit record like all this is happening, and the song didn't even make a giant splash. Well, I'm the, like, song's, the song's getting a lot of publicity now because of the controversy. <laughs> well, God bless the song, and I, and I still very much care, and I, I've expressed this even every time me responding to each person in the situation is me continuously expressing how much I still care about them and still respect them and still admire the work that we did together. And there were even as solo artists, like. When all that first came out, I said, I'm never going to disrespect somebody I view as a sister. I'm also never going to disrespect somebody I viewed as an idol. I've told Keisha so many times, like, you are literally a bonding factor between me and my mom who don't have a relationship. 
You know what I'm saying? Like, I told her that to her face. I told her that on set of the video. Like, mm-hmm. all these moments, even in the text messages that I posted out of just being like, I'm sick of this shit. Like, mm-hmm. it's me saying, yo, like, I f- like you can go look up on YouTube, Kehlani Keisha Cole covers, and I'm covering her songs everywhere. Mm-hmm. Like, this is the this is the girl for me growing up in Oakland. So, so, so were you surprised when Keisha said that she didn't see you guys as friends and didn't see you guys as being able to be friends? No, I wasn't surprised because that happened. The situation happened a while ago, and it really I got accused of like purposely like tampering with the lighting on set of the video when wow. I wasn't even there. We shot our we shot majority of our scenes together. I left to go pick up my daughter, and then she shot her solo scenes. We sent the video. The first thing back was, I can't believe this. I can't believe y'all would ever do this to me. It's fuck y'all, blah, blah, blah. All kind oh, of wow. shit. From Keisha? I, from Keisha? Yeah. And I literally was just, and she was like, I'm going to be sure to tell everybody that it was a horrible experience. And not, and that's not for me to like, I'm just not trying to make it a negative thing. I'm, I'm trying to, the whole time I'm trying to understand like, what is the root of the issue? Like what could be really happening right now? Mm-hmm. And I ended up and I was like, girl, and then, Oh no, first thing was my manager, she guess she hit my manager and apologized and told him to tell me she, my bad, like I just don't like, you know, how the video turned out. And I I just hit her up and I was like, yo, like we could go sit with the director and we could like go scene by scene and you could pick out every scene that you feel like you look your best and you feel your best and you love the performance and we could re-edit the entire video. We've already pushed the video back weeks because she wanted to So time. so from your from what I'm here cuz I've talked to all three now. From what I hear from you is that in your mind, you were doing everything you could to try. You were working with Keisha while she was trying to build a bridge bridge with Kamaya. You were trying to work with Keisha and the director to satisfy what she want in the video, what she wasn't happy with. And then eventually you realize the shit just ain't going to work. I'm out. Yeah, I mean, we were on the phone and I kept coming up with all these solutions. Like, let's sit with the director. Like, let's go do this. And then it came to a matter of fact, she said, I'm going to go get new outfits, new team and a whole new location and go shoot it in a couple of days. And like, we didn't have time for that. Like this is mm-hmm. now leaking into like my rollouts and things like that. And I was like, we, I, and I kept saying, you know, respectfully, like we don't have time for that. So if you really want to figure out, we can sit with the director. If not, I guess I'm going to have to figure out like, do I scrap the video? What I do with it? And she was like, well, I'm not clearing the video, so you're gonna have to like you're gonna have to scrap the video. And I was like, I just I don't think that I have to scrap an entire project that one, the director is one of my very close friends I look at as a brother. This was something that we did together. Mm. This had the turf fiends in it, which is a dance group from Oakland. Like there were so many like aspects of this video that was important to me that I was like, I don't think we should have to scrap all the hard work that many people put in for this. So I just said, you know what, I respect that. I definitely would never put something out without your permission. And I'm going to just cut the video in half and tease a new song, which ended up being the Janae Aiko song on my album. And it actually worked out really well. And I think that it just, it it just, you know, I don't know, maybe it made everybody more mad. Does this discourage you from doing collaborations maybe in the future? No, I think that it actually encourages me to just kind of have more thorough bonds with the people that I'm collaborating with beforehand and kind of like really have these conversations where we like sit face to face and we're like, I genuinely rock with what you do. I genuinely rock with you. You got to genuinely rock with what I do and genuinely rock with me for us to really ensure that we're putting out something we're going to be happy with and like, we're going to want to support and we're going to want to like, you know, like, I don't know. Like, I just feel like maybe the bond wasn't, it just wasn't what, any of us thought it was and i'm just trying to not speak from a personal perspective because it's about it's about three women so well and to clear it up i mean um yg at the time you guys were together and they had a fallout yg had nothing to do with their your decision uh, your relationship had nothing to do with it okay yeah, so so where do you go from here i mean do you if they're listening do you have a message for them i mean i could always take one yeah. back <laughs> i mean i just i think i've overly consistently expressed to even when blogs were posting the whole thing and they were saying you know some 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 people was the blogs were posting other people's chiming in to it and like there was some bashing of Keisha or bashing of Kamai and I kept getting in the comments of them blogs and saying that's not what the fuck it is no, I, I, I thought I thought you were doing a good job of putting your point of view out I mean you were you were put you were posting in your on your stuff and in the comments I saw that 
Yeah, I was just trying to, I don't ever want anybody that paved the way for me to think that I am intentionally being anything other than respectful because I know how hard it is as a woman in this industry, especially a woman from Oakland. Like, we're supposed to be holding it down. We're supposed to be like, banded together nobody's that was the whole point of me and Kamaya was like we're looking at it like nobody's ever done this have you seen an R&B singer and a rapper like from the same city both women like do a collab project like but all these men can join together and like do these collab projects we got slime and b we got you know when ty links up and does all his stuff um so it's like if they're listening it's just more so like whatever we got to do to hash this out and like hear each other out. I'm not in a position of like wanting to be defensive. I'm not in a position of wanting to like get a point across. I feel like I've gotten my point across in private, in in at the business table, on either side of the business table, on the phone with management, and now on on blogs and on the internet. And I just want to hear everybody out. And I would like to apologize if there's room to apologize. And I would like to also receive some apologies I feel like I'm deserved. And move forward, like life is short. I just lost two friends. Like it's not this deep. Like well, then there was a whole art debate of whether or not you were from the Bay. Are you from Oakland or Piedmont? Because you know I'm from Stockton, and I tell people I'm from the Bay. They'd be like, "You ain't from the Bay. You from Stockton?" Yeah, I mean technically Stockton is the Bay. No, don't even don't even start that. Bar, don't, please, a bar don't go there. So you know, you know, we got a problem. Um. And yeah, I'm from 53rd. I'm from North Oakland, which has now been taken completely over as like Temescal. But I'm from 53rd. Like, I I remember when they were shooting Cupcake No Feeling in the donut shop around the corner from my crib. Like, I caught the bus right there. Like, I'm cho- how Oakland Children's Hospital right there? And I'm not from Oakland. Like, how was this by factual? Like, it just. I, and, well, I listen. Also, this beef that should never have been a beef is doing a great job of putting on for the city, though. It's putting on for the city. <laughs> I wish it was putting on for the city in a positive way, though. Like, yeah. I wish it was positive. That's All we need is a grill and a turf show, and we are right there at uh, Lamert Park. No, wait, is Lamert Park? Is that out here? That's, that's, that's in that's wait, that's no, wait, wait, no, wait, 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 what is the, what is the park? Not, park? Wait, what is the park in Oakland? Hold on. Um, parks in oakland no there's like hold on oh no i was gonna say durant square i don't know why i said lamar park durant square now i know i'm in oakland with durant square there ain't a park but anyway let's move we're on we're gonna, we gonna go with durant <laughs> wait yeah, lamar park, park. Lamert park. <laughs> <laughs> look i'm i don't know where i'm at half the time okay okay so okay. one of my one of my favorite songs of yours um uh, that, well, that you collaborated on was with charlie puth uh believe it or not that uh yeah I like that song. Uh, it's a jam. I just didn't expect you to say it. I don't know. <laughs> Why? I, I think Charlie Puth is I a vibe. I haven't heard anybody mention it. It's just been a long time. So it wasn't like I didn't expect you to say it. I just didn't expect that one of all the songs. It's such a vibe. I mean, that's, I, I, I thought it was a great collaboration. I also like, I, I also. I also loved Ring. I'm not going to say the other artist's name because I get bashed every time I say her name on the show. Like you say her name. I love Cardi B. I love Cardi. Thank you for doing a hit record with me, Cardi. I appreciate it. Go Bow Mom Club. <laughs> she said it. All right, but the new album it just dropped this uh, Friday. Uh, so it was good. good. It was good until it wasn't. Who? Let's who we talk about. I'm talking about life. I'm talking about relationships. I'm talking about my last specific relationship, to be honest. And do you want to drink your water, thirsty? <laughs> no, no. I was, I was a little, I was a little parched. <laughs> it's very obvious. I was very um, candid on the record, and but I think that's something that I've always been. If you go through all my projects, you can trace my love life. So it's nothing new. But don't you think that's what makes for good music, though? Like, I feel like if you do have pain and drama, I think that's what made me fall in love with Mary J. Blige in the 90s, right? I mean, all of what she was going through was poured into her records, and we got the best music. Don't you think that that's kind of where all this should live if you're a creative artist? Yeah. um, It's funny because I did an interview with Angie Martinez that I wasn't able to finish back when I was first trying to start doing interviews again. I got too nervous and emotional, and I had to step out. And she sat me down and had a long conversation with me in her office. And she was just saying, like, you know, you remind me of Mary J. Blige in the sense of, like, putting everything out there and kind of, like, deciding to do it musically than anything else. And then just, like, taking everything to the chin um, beyond that. So 
that was just a cool. I mean, yeah, for Angie to compare you to Mary J, that's that's just huge in itself, right there. I, I mean, I, I will never say I'm as great as anybody I'm compared to, but I will take that as far as being a tough girl. I think me and Mary can relate for sure. And for Angie to say it, that's the best co-sign ever. Shout out to Angie Martinez. So, 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 so Tory Lanez is on the on the new record. Yeah. So let me tell you a moment. So hold on, I get some water. Bye bye. The thirst. Yeah, the thirst is real. So I was at dinner in Miami at Prime 112 yeah. and saw you and Tori there having dinner. Now, I don't like to get in people's business <laughs> in person, I, but I do online. So I was sitting there and, you know, Tori came over and, you know, got a picture with another person who I can't say his name on this show because they'll attack me. Um, and then everybody else it was floyd mayweather we were having dinner we were having dinner and then i saw you walk out and i really thought i had an exclusive but i didn't know <laughs> if i had an exclusive no. are have you guys always been friends have you guys ever dated no 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 there first of all there was like five of us at that table and also daniel from the group division so it was a very yeah. hard night it's sort of like when i saw you emerge out the room it's you kind of like came out real slow motion it was like smoky I Drunk, first of all, and that boy smoked so much weed, it was smoky because they were smoking weed in there. I'm being and dramatic, walked, I'm being dramatic. I didn't see no I, smoke. I probably walked out because I was probably not fucking with the smoke because it really does. <laughs> I'm a grandma at this point in my life. Um, but there was so many people with us at dinner my assistant, two of my homegirls, Daniel from Division. Like, we ended up going and linking up with like it was the most RB night I ever seen in the club at once. It was like Bryson Tiller was there, like G Easy was with us. Like it was very musical. In no, show. I saw a lot of people coming out the dinner at Prime 112, but you know, I only saw, well, you know, I saw him emerge. He's so yeah. short behind all these huge yeah. guys. And then you, I thought like, oh, maybe you they're on a date. All, this, all the bad bitches that was with him? No, I didn't. I saw one bad bitch. Oh, well. <laughs> you don't, thank you. Okay, but anyway, you, so you guys are just friends. So who? So are you happily single now? Like you have this new album. Is there anybody that you're like, all right, now we're laying in bed. Don't let the next one be about you. I mean, is there somebody that you have your eye on? Um, I have my eye on music and this album. This is my baby That's right, right now. That's right. And I think that I would definitely try to protect the next situation I get into. You know, more privately and try to like maintain some sense of privacy. Me and YG weren't necessarily supposed to go public. Somebody sent something to the shade room and they all of a sudden they're like, I think YG and Kelani are popping out tonight. And I was like, what type of sick setup shit is this? Like I was in the corner of a fashion week party spazzing on everybody. Like they had to calm me down. I was like, I don't remember where the hell I, I think, was. I think that's extremely disrespectful. They should have sent it to Hollywood Unlocked. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so wait, so so with the album, are we gonna see a lot more visuals? Are we gonna what's the next single? Can you even say that right now? Or well, I mean, we're winging everything because everything is you know different because of quarantine. But I took everything into my own hands. I fully directed and shot and edited every single video and That's crazy. The album cover and every magazine cover and every like rollout picture for this entire thing we're sitting in my garage right now which is my video editing space so me and my photographer went and bought a computer bought a new camera bought a drone camera and have been sitting on youtube and learned how to do everything for the oh, entire wow. Wow. person ourselves so all the visuals that you're seeing is just me and one other girl who just started as like my photographer and now we have a production company like fully stamped and are putting everything out ourselves so i think that that is that's amazing you know, I wanted to close out talking out talking about all the things I've never addressed about like my personal life and like mess and things like that and just kind of bring it back to like I have something on my hands that is something to be really really proud of and it's actually going very crazy right now. Well that's what I was going to say was it important for you as a creative and as an artist to be able to figure out how to express yourself not just musically but visually creatively and just be more involved this album? Um, yeah, no, I mean I think it w I mean, we had had a very crazy visual concept initially for the album and for the album cover. And my video director got stuck in London because of travel ban. And, you know, it made no sense to shoot any videos. Can't have a team of people shooting a video. And so I had to take everything into my own hands. But through doing that, I gained a whole new, like, love and respect for that craft and a, a new kind of respect for myself even and like my what I'm able to push myself to do and when I sit down and focus what I'm able to like come out with so mm. 
Okay, and so what is it, what part of the um, creative process with this album did you like the least? Um, I mean, not be, not no drama, but just in terms of the creative part. I mean, having to narrow down the songs, having to yeah. decide, like, I had 50 records, like I had 50 Ooh. songs, like from it being, it being different albums and then lumping over this entire, you know, year and a half span of like, I have 50 songs that I all think is pretty tight. But once we solidified the title, it was like, okay, now everything can fall into place properly. Will we be able to hear these songs in some other kind of way? Because, you know, we want to hear them. I think so at some point. I think I'm trying to zone in and, like, be more concise with my bodies of work. I personally think this is my most, like, concise and, like, intricate and well-put-together body of work. So I'm kind of trying to stay in this path. It's got my highest, like ratings of like professional criticism and reviews and it's kind of got like the biggest response i've never had a number one album my album is number one as we speak right now congratulations congratulations and i'm just trying to stay and follow this one up with an equally as concise and focused album so if some of those songs make it sure but probably not because i'm gonna be just as focused and go into this knowing what i want to do but 50 songs though i mean how so now that you've dropped this album when you go back into the creative process as an artist do you all have like a do you do you base your vibe on what you're going through at the time where music is or what the fans want because your fans are i know how your fans are because they've been all on my twitter uh they are really they love you um do you give your fans what they want or do you give them where what you where you are at the time i give whatever wherever i'm at at the time i mean the last time i dropped an album i was 20 I think so like naturally I'm going to be a whole nother person I'm a mom now like naturally everything about me has evolved into like a more mature and more future I don't want to say futuristic because that just doesn't make sense but (laughs) a more mature and more adult version of myself um I did notice that if I did get any criticism it was that it wasn't as bright or like poppy or like dancey as my old stuff was but that's just not where I'm at with it. Like I wasn't in a poppy mood. I wasn't in a dancing mood. I wasn't in a bright and shiny mood as I probably was when I was 22 and bright eyed before things kind of got really trippy and hazy. And um, yeah, and I, I'm sure maybe the next one won't sound like this one cause I'll be completely somewhere else with it. But it's just, you know, how I'm evolving as a person. Well, listen, thank you for, um... I know uh, I saw you on live once and I popped in on Hollywood Unlocked. I'm rarely on the Instagram, but I popped in and said, hey, um, we do an interview. And you were like, no. Uh, but thank you for coming uh, on thank the show. So I, I wish we could have been in person. But I, but more importantly, I'm glad that you are, you know, I know that you don't like to do a lot of interviews, but I'm glad that you are, you know, very open and very transparent. You know, for the record, you didn't say, don't ask me this. Don't ask me that. Make sure you ask this. Make sure you ask that. So I know that's typically when a person's just saying, hey, ask me whatever you want. Let's get into whatever you want. And I think that transparency is the thing that your fans love about you. And uh, I'm glad that we were able to establish a connection between you and Hollywood Unlocked. And anytime you need anything, just let us know. Absolutely. Well, I appreciate it. And I appreciate you kind of holding and facilitating this space for me to speak my piece, you know, about things that people have questions of. So Yeah, because I think people people's perspectives get lost on Instagram fights, you know, when the, especially when it's posted on the blogs and people are talking, everybody knows exactly what happened and they weren't there. So, I mean, your voice was missing in it also. Boom. And now we don't need to talk about it no more. It's over. I'm done. I love everyone. Woo. And, and, and I hope, and I hope the three of you can figure that out because they're, they're, those records, yeah. Are, yeah. you know, the records is hot. I'm telling you, she's fast. She killed every verse. Like it's in freaking saying like so hopefully hopefully we figure it out and it can be done one day please do for real okay well i'm gonna try to make it happen so i can get some publishing give me a plaque give me a plaque on your number one album congratulations yeah i appreciate and, it and thank you for sticking with us through all our technical difficulties we appreciate it oh yeah i'm rocking <laughs> all right bye everybody peace bye. peace What up, YouTube? Thank you for watching this reckless show. Yeah, and hit that subscribe button and don't forget to hit the notification bell. And also don't forget to share and leave a comment because we are reading.